of man, in a sense, with all the technology we have, can play God. And this is something which is huge now. A lot of yeah. ethical discussions about things like stem cell research. Should we be interfering no. in what should be a godly terrain? You say no straight away. Straight away, no. I think uh, they sort of like messing about now. I think that's the problem. We've got the tools and they like to use them. And that's what happens. I've got a sander uh, for Christmas and I, I, I can't wait to sand stuff. I can't even think of enough things that need sanding. But I want to use it. And Not that's scrappy sander. And that's the problem, innit? If you've got the tools, you can't have the tools and say, pop them in the shed. Well, no, I don't want to, I want to use them. I've got a new tool here. Right, well, sand the shed, though. That's the problem, innit? All these, all these, you know, medical people. Mm. Um, that's what happened in the Hulk, innit? Yeah, well, again, that's, I'll just say that is a work of fiction. The Hulk. Yeah, but with all fiction comes the future. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, so, Certainly uh, in science fiction. <laughs> but the problem is, this is what I say is the problem. We can sum it up here if you like. I think Go it on. Sums it up. Go on. No, this is. A, is it a quote from someone? Well, yeah, yeah. He's it's, 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 it's one for sound bites, and um, it just no. saves a lot of time. Uh, Carl's quote: you don't, you don't have to study the book or anything. Um, so uh, let's let's sum it up there. Let, 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 we're going to end it here, but we're going to end it uh, oh. with uh, with this quote from Carl Pilkington. Carl, shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> People are living too long. <laughs> okay, that what, that's your summary of medicine. Well, yeah, it is medicine. because it's kind of now. You see, I agree with medicine to stop pain because it's, it's depressing pain. Mm. Stop the pain. Mm. Um, I'd say, I'd say, as soon as we sorted that out, and we started saying, "Do you want a new face?" That's way over the line. Yeah. No one should be getting a new face unless they're really disfigured. Yeah. But those are the people who are getting new faces. No, they're not. There's people messing about. Yeah, no, it's people. Or well, plastic surgery, but that's yeah. people's own choice. They're paying for no, it. It's, it's up ridiculous. To them. I know, but it's, it's, not, it's not taking it away from other people, is it? Yeah, it is because the person who's messing about with someone's face could be doing something no, else. No, because they're plastic surgeons. They're privately employed. Yeah, but they shouldn't be. They should what are you be sorting about? someone else out who's got a little funny head. They shouldn't be messing about with someone's face. Pushing themselves forward, yeah. trying to get some free treatment. Get some free and treatment it never looks right anyway. They spend no. all that money. It never fits properly. Yeah, no. you, you, this, fish, is, this is what annoys me about fish lips and uh, and it that, that little that yeah. stupid little skeletal nose. You'd be better off changing the head, all of it, rather than messing about with the face because it never fits properly. Mm. But you've completely, as a form of summary, you have completely gone off tangent. No, no that's no. not a summary yet. Sum right. up. I have one more go. This is this is the real one. Okay, Carl, sum up our global. Guide to medicine. Go. Uh, today's cure. Mm. Mm. Today's cure. It's something like. It's something like that. It'll be something like. Uh, mm. Today's cure is tomorrow's headache. It's all right. That's all right. Because what I'm saying there is, go on. We can come up with with stuff. Mm. We can come up with a tablet to get rid of headache. Mm. Tomorrow, your headache's gone. Your leg's hurting. So today's cure is actually tomorrow's leg ache. So today's <laughs> cure is tomorrow's leg ache. Yeah, but ages ago Go I on. said to you, don't solve problems. Yeah. Because a problem solved is a problem caused. <laughs> I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! I don't remember that quote. <laughs> But, okay, so, so finally, in summation, you, uh, what you said was- So, uh, okay. At the end so, of the day, we've all got to die of something. Right. Now, Albert might come in. I'm a doctor. Right, Albert, how are you today? What's, what's wrong with you today, Albert? Uh, oh, I've got an information of the, uh, testicular region. Right. A, oh, my scrotal sac is all, it's all stretchy and swollen, it's pustulating and it's causing the penis to, uh, to be all red and inflamed and, and that spread to the anus. Uh, right. <gasps> Take these tablets. Right, where do I put them? Where do I put them? Just have them with some water after a bath. Okay, I'm not going to have a bath. I can't have a bath of these. Because the, 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 if, uh, honestly, you see these get in a bath and they start bubbling with the... Yeah, like the, I say, just the, take the tablet. I think, I think, I don't know what it is, but it's, look at it. It's yeah. like a mess. It's like quite a mess down there. I can't... Oh, well, take, take the tablets. <laughs> oh, take the tablets and yeah. come back. Come back. <sighs> Some, you know, in a week's uh, time. Uh, Let me know how it goes. Okay. Right? Right, so you know let's, what it is. let's imagine that that perfectly normal scenario <laughs> has happened. <laughs> what, what, what is your point? Right, we'll come back the week after. Yeah. The problems downstairs will be sorted. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he's 76. 
he's gonna have something else wrong with him. I do another check on you, and even though you, you, you sack as sorted- They're not- it's not- they're not quite right, to be honest. No, but he better. Yeah, uh, well, it, it swings and roundabouts, yeah, because- well, that's- that's the, life, the, that's the, life, the, 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 the penis is- is- is much more functional. The, the testicles are, are really- that they've lost all their skin, it's just- it's just like a bag of spaghetti just hanging on the chair. Mm. And the arse- the, the arse is the itchiest arse I've ever had. I've had to, at some points, I- I've got blood under my fingernails and scratching my anus. So it's not completely cured. And this is why no one wants to be a doctor anymore. <laughs> that cataract operations on the eye were performed in India as early as 1000 BC. And uh, in Babylonia in the same time, the fees of eye surgeons were rigidly fixed by law and were quite generous. So for instance, uh, if you're a very rich person, it cost you about 10 shekels. If you're a slave, only two shekels. But if the rich person lost the sight of their eye after the surgeon had operated, they would uh, cut off the hand of the, of the doctor. What, so he gets he gets one chance at it? Well, he doesn't want to screw up. Yeah, I know, but everyone's ad allowed what a couple of errors. That's how you learn, isn't it? That's a, st a, stu a stupid rule, but then again, I don't know why they'd be so worried about their eyes back then. What do you mean? Well, there was less to look at back then. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Well, <laughs> like that, I saw a fella on the tube on the way here today who was blind. Proper, fully on, fully on blind. Blind? Um, now... For him, I just was like, oh, that's so depressing. Right. So much to see in the world now. Loads right. of stuff. Right. Art, buildings, and all that. Now, back then, if these people did have sight once, the pyramids, y you remember it in your head, and that's that's enough. There wasn't loads of clutter anyway. It was all sand. So even if you fell over because you're blind, you, at least you landed on something soft. Whereas now, <laughs> it's rubbish being blind. Stairs. Loads and loads of people, loads of curbs and things. It's not a good time to be blind. So I'd prefer if brilliant. I was going to be blind, That's be blind brilliant. back when Tutankhamun was knocking about. That's the choice that people have that are, that are blind now. No. If you're going to be blind, be blind back when Tutankhamun was knocking about. But all I'm saying. Sorry, it, doctor. It I didn't realise there was a choice. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. If you if you'd only told me you were going blind, I'd have said, well, let's get you back three thousand years. <laughs> it just seems a bit harsh. That's all. When someone's trying to help you. And operate on your eyes, and and they have a little bit of a slip up like we all do in in jobs. Mm. You have a bad day, mm. and it's he, he has to have his hands cut off. Then who's helping him? Who puts the hand back on him? And if they don't put the hand back on him right, do they have something done to them? They're blinded. Well, it just <laughs> it just seems like yeah. a no-win situation. I wouldn't be a doctor, and maybe that's why there aren't enough doctors about now because of things like that that put people off. I don't think so. Well, I wouldn't be a doctor now. Why? Look at the hassle that happens now. Everything's you're being watched all the time. You're not allowed to slip up. Right. Well, that's generally quite a good rule, isn't it? That doctors don't make well, mistakes. No, but you've got to. I, I'd say at the end of the day, it's a complicated job. I'd get more annoyed when, you know, say like the fellow I've got round coming to fix my boiler. Mm. The fact he keeps having a go, he keeps charging me eighty quid. He don't really fix Is it. Is it still he keeps, still he keeps not working? Back. I haven't cut his hands off. No. He keeps coming back. Oh, I'm a bit short on money. Let's go around to the Pilkington house, household. Charge him eighty quid again. Oh, it's Christmas. <laughs> Let's pop round twice. Do you know what I mean? Whereas a doctor who's trying to help people, it's yeah. a difficult job. Yeah. If he makes a mistake now and again, mm. I think well, it's bound to happen. It's, it's complicated. The, 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 can't you see where um, I, I, I I agree with you that people make mistakes and uh, and I imagine there are good and bad doctors. They try and even that out by um, it being a very very obviously uh, uh, stringent exam and and uh, you know. It's eleven years they've got to do. I read up on it. Eleven mm. years it takes to be a doctor. No, it doesn't. It does. It takes seven. No, but then they've got to be in hospital or something for four years before they get to play with someone. Right. Okay. Yeah. So okay. that's ages. Eh? You're going to get bored. You're going to get bored. Well, and then when well no, but that's it. They, they, you know, they, they really do try and uh, rule out, and there's still, there's still chance and mistake, and and don't forget, you know, t you're given um, it nearly impossible tasks still in medicine. Just, just think of the, think of the risk with um. You know, transplants alone. You know, and they're getting better and better at those, yeah. and they're lasting longer. But but the fact of the matter is, it's better to have a go in it than not have one. If someone well, said to me, "Right, depends. you need a new heart," 
Yeah. We're gonna do it. As they say you're gonna die anyway, let's yeah. try this new thing, you might as well. Have a but word. then there are some things that there is not worth the risk. When someone, uh, it goes wrong, when someone's facial surgery goes wrong because they wanted plumper lips or a little yeah, well, nose, I'll go, no you're a sympathy. fucking idiot. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. You yeah, shouldn't even be doing that. Doctors shouldn't even be allowed to do that. I, I don't, don't know think. why, I really don't know why, um, a doctor, uh, under a Hippocratic uh, Oath, takes the risk of something going badly wrong, sometimes general anaesthetic, because they wanna, because they can't be bothered to fucking go for a run, mm. right? So they have fucking bits sliced off and tied up and sucked out. I wanna go, you lazy fucking fat pig. Mm. Just go for a run and stop eating burgers, right? Mm. You might fucking die. Oh. Well, can I just stop you there, Rick? Because actually, if it weren't for uh, a plump patient, Mm. The stethoscope would never have been invented. What, because he couldn't hear Yeah, their the, person, the person who uh, invented the stethoscope, uh, Dr. René Lenec, uh, couldn't have a very fat patient come in and couldn't hear her heart through the blubber. But then that's, that's the sign <laughs> of the problem. I mean, that's the sign of the problem, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, rather than saying, hang on, let's, let's get a bigger chair in for her because she's got a fat ass. <laughs> yeah, I'd say, well, you're not welcome here. If you can't get through the door, I'm not seeing you. I mean, if you've got a doctor who's having his hands cut off because he messed up an operation, yet Fatty's coming in <laughs> and getting special treatment, I, d I wouldn't give him time of day. You see, this this is what I'm saying, right? This is going right back to what I was saying at the beginning. The problem is, we've got pills for everything, and all this is doing is making people treat the body badly. Because yeah. you're going, be alright, there'll be something. It's There'll funny, isn't it, that like these tests, they go, well, let's have a look. It's it, what we were talking before about, um, uh, weighing kids. If they can't get through the door to get to school, there's too, you don't, you know, if they go, oh, I'm just gonna take a sample of your stool. Actually, I don't, uh, you're too fat. Your shit's come out like Tagliatelle. Your ass is too fucking fat. Stop eating your gut. I'm gonna take a sample of your stool. What, the one you fucking broke when you sat down? <laughs> <laughs> I just think this is the problem. You know, we can do too much, and because of this, people are going, I don't care about my body. Mm. They worry more about the, the plasma telly getting a scratch on it than they do about their own body. Exactly. And if we if we stopped giving them tablets willy nilly, they'd have to look after the body more. Willy nilly is one of the worst diseases in the Western <laughs> world. So Carl, if you had to go to a new planet, don't worry about starting life again. They've got sort of like these breeder clones that do all that, but you can choose six people from this world to take to start this whole new world, okay? So you need, you know, as I say, you don't need to So worry what's about happening here? Is this, is this... It's gonna be wiped out, okay? It's gonna be wiped out, but there's enough on this spaceship for you and five other people, okay? And they've got them there, they've got these, they've got these sort of breeder clones there, so it's gonna be populated. You're gonna have the workers, the drones, everything like that, but you wanna take six, I suppose, sort of, um, uh, world lords to teach, to lay down the politics, the, the the teachings, the laws, the government. I'd hate okay. This. I'd hate it. Um and how long have I got to make a decision on it? Uh to the end of this podcast. Right, go. Who do you take? Who's the first person you take and why? Uh And where where are we going? We, Mars. Oh. Okay, so a, a planet where there's a, a, a an atmosphere. I've got to know where I'm going because I've got uh, to sell it to the people who I'm asking. There's no point when okay, I go. Are you it's, coming it's, with me? Where are you going? I don't know. It's just like this world. There's there's oxygen. There's seas. There's rivers. There's forests. There's animals. Okay, but we're going to populate it with uh, the human race, and you can choose six people to lord over this new uh, kingdom. You want the best people for the job. Yeah. So who, who's the first person? Probably, um, Patrick Moore. Why? <laughs> why? Why would you take Patrick Moore? Just because he he knows knows his way about up there, don't he? He'll know the way. So just just have him. I think that will whoever I pick next, if they see that he's going, they'll go right. You know, it's going to be a long Moore's journey as board. it is. You don't want someone who's going to be going. Is it left here? Is it right? Do you know what I mean? And he could play the xylophone on the journey. But, but, is a, Carl, right. is more the most useful person to have if you've only got six? Because he may be very useful getting to the planet, no, but, but I've once you've got there- No, but I've always wanted to meet him as well. I've always wanted a chat, and that'd be a good chance, wouldn't it, when I'm in a rocket? How long's it taking to get to Mars? I don't know, a, a year. That's what I mean, No, so. it's not Mars, it's somewhere else, okay, so it's a year to get there and then- Yeah, well, that's what I mean, so it's a good chance to have a chat with him, uh, okay. about stuff. Um, so and more. I think he'd be up for it as well, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I think, I think, you know- well, his, why do you, why do you think that? Just because he spent his whole life- Talking about what's going on up there, isn't it? And yet he's never been, and I feel sorry for him. You know, most people when they when they're into something, they get to go to a place, don't they? 
Sure. Uh, People uh, don't know who Patrick Moore is. He's um, an 80 year old uh, <laughs> astronomer. astronomer. Yeah, that's what I mean. So let him have, well, a, have a bit of a good life. So Moore's on board. Yeah, Patrick Moore. He's he's on. Right, out five others. Four others now. Uh, Jamie Oliver. Why? <laughs> why would you take Jamie Oliver? <laughs> just food and that. You just thought you need someone because they say that like you, uh, you know, you can feel down if you don't eat. Um, he couldn't convince eight-year-olds to eat a carrot. What's he going to do in this brave new world? They're all going to be on turkey Twizzlers. I think he's he's got the right attitude. He wouldn't be faffing about. Remember, we've we've landed now on this new world. Yeah. I don't know what it's like. The people who listen, made I me love go. Jamie Oliver. I think he's great. Yeah. But he wouldn't be in my five people to start a new world. That's all I'm saying. Nor would Patrick Moore because well, he knew the way. <laughs> well, what chef would you pick? I wouldn't pick a chef. Why would I pick a chef? Because you want someone who's going to, like I say, food's important when you're low. There's nothing better. If you're a bit fed up, there's nothing better than having a good- But Carl, I don't think you've quite grasped that these people have to start civilization again. They have to yeah. be wise, wise people who can make the laws. Yeah. And before you do all that, you need a good meal. So th Jamie Oliver, he'll be- that's his job. It's like, when we get there, that's when he kicks in. Right. right He's okay. the first one, really, can I suggest who gets going. Up? Just to save two places on Patrick Moore and Jamie Oliver, Take a map and a cookbook. <laughs> okay, who's number three? What sort of state is this world in? Does it need? Oh, it's going to take a fucking gardener. It's yeah. it's like the it's it's the world but new. It's the it's that exactly. It's the world but new, untouched by humans. There's there been no fossil fuels burnt, no machinery, no wars, just this Garden of Eden. And you, Patrick Moore and Jamie <laughs> Oliver, pitch up. <laughs> Plus, who else, Carl? Go now. First thought. Attenborough. <laughs> oh, God. Again, he's a genius. And he's, you know, he's a, he's a bit of a hero of mine. But I don't know if we need Attenborough. Just because I reckon if it's a new world, you're saying it's the same, but they always say, don't they, that all worlds are different. So I'd want him there just to sort of, when we're roaming around, because we'll all stick together for a bit, won't we? Mm. Uh, yeah. When we're roaming around... Then they'll be sick of the sight of you. Uh, they go, let's lose Carl. But you've got two men so far who've got a combined age of about 150. <laughs> I mean, if you're starting a brave new world, dare I say, not going to be around very long. Shouldn't you be taking some younger, fresher blood? No, not really, because they haven't lived, have they? These have lived, and they'll, they, they can sort And they're useful, like I say. Patrick Moore's done his bit, he's got us there. Uh, Oliver, he's cooked us a dinner. Day two, I reckon we'd end that on day one there. We'd have a dinner, we'd all have a chat. I don't think you're thinking of the future. I it's think like you're thinking of the I think you're thinking of the journey, and then the first night. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Okay, okay. So, so you've day, got David two, Attenborough, yeah. you've got Patrick Morton, you've got Jamie Oliver, you've got two other places. I get the feeling that you're not so much recruiting people for a new world as I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> as a dinner party with <laughs> yeah. people you'd like to meet that you've seen on the telly. <laughs> oh. Come uh, on, in two more. I'll text someone who's a bit daft. Just so. No, you don't need to, Carl. That's covered, believe us. Yeah, no, believe no, that's what I mean, though. I don't want them having a go at me going, why are you here? I'd put point the attention somewhere else to text someone else who'd sort of wind them up. So Who's I'm that, then? Paul Denan or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> it really is. I'm a celebrity. <laughs> so you've got, you've got Patrick Moore, you've got David Attenborough, you've got Jamie Oliver and Paul Denan. <laughs> Starting, new world. starting life again. <laughs> okay then, brilliant. Oh god. Right, one more. This is an amazing. This is a, it's going to be. I'd love to go back and visit this in a thousand years. What teachings they laid down? Oh god. Don't know. It have to be uh, a woman. I think you got to have a woman in that little group, haven't you? Is could have another another woman chef or. <laughs> It's mainly eating. It's it's mainly eating. Oh, he's God. got that covered with Oliver, but no, no, I he's got to take Nigella in case he's in a <laughs> cream cake kind of mood. Oh God! Oh God! Delia Smith was furious. She packed her bags and everything. <laughs> or a nurse. Now you're thinking, Abby Titmus. <laughs> <laughs> Med
medicine is the art or science of healing and that doesn't always have to be um, a, a drug or a surgery. I mean, bedside manner has a lot to do with things. And uh, also, it's all about care as well. Uh, we mustn't just forget that um, some people don't need medicine. They just need help. Um, for example, uh, there are people that help disabled people um, have intercourse where they can't, you know, maybe get on to the, to the, the, the woman herself. And uh, there's someone that actually helps the man put in his penis um, to the, uh, the woman's, um, vagina. Never, they leave the room. No. What? I've never seen, I've never even heard of this. <laughs> it's true. Absolutely true. They're Stay. helpers. Yeah, no, I believe that is the case. Yeah. And that's just, no, that's just as needed as anything that, that, that might cure well, it's them not, out. It's not, that's pleasure. Yeah. So what are you saying because you can't walk or, or, or move that you can't love someone and want to, to, to share that love? I'm just saying it's not a priority. Well, no, but they, 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 they're, they're going to live, they're, they're, they're healthy ap apart from their, their disability. I've met someone, they want to, you know, consummate this, this love, and someone is, um, helps them out and goes, well, I, you know, that's, that's part of my job. No, it's not part of the job. <laughs> well, it, it, well, no it is part of this job, because that's their job. I have never heard anyone say oh, I've had a right day today. Why? I've been playing with Arthur's, uh, tackle all day. They don't I, play never... with Arthur's tackle, they pop Arthur's tackle in Hilda's vagina. I don't think they do. They do! How can they enjoy that? I they mean, maybe once, maybe it. once, and they'd go, that didn't work, did it? I didn't enjoy that, Hilda. No. How can they enjoy it with a nurse stood there having they don't, to do that? She, no, they help her in, she helps it, Arthur in, or he, might be a male nurse, pops Arthur in, goes, okay Arthur, um, I'll, I'll see you in a few minutes, right, goes outside. But what's the see. point though in that? Why? Because it's all about the mood and everything. He's just stuck onto a like, like a stag beetle clinging <laughs> onto a leaf. <laughs> There's no enjoyment in that. Oh, the well-known uh, stag beetle copulating with a leaf syndrome. No, but I'm no, not that's saying- That's well-known position in the Garmin Sutra. I'm no, just he saying- No, he knows that, you know, he's, he's, uh, it's, it's, I think it's a lovely act and someone's willing to- wouldn't you help someone Definitely in there? Definitely not. No, what? Well, so, no, no, so the guy goes, um, uh, uh, oh, this is my wife, um, we're both say, well, I can't, I can't, you know, can you just pop me in, Carl? Um, you're the only, you know, uh, 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 you're the only person around. No, um, I don't think it's important enough. But there enough. are people- What do you mean you don't think it's important enough? I'd be happy to go round, put the washing on for them, make the bed. Do you want a cup of tea? Yeah, I'd love one. There you go. Oh, just before you go, forget it. <laughs> if they asked me to do that, I would- I'd, I'd quit. And I think it, I don't think it happens, because people it wouldn't take happen. that on for a job. You it never does. hear about it. On Comic Relief, when they're raising money, they don't go, thanks to Midland Bank for this hundred grand, that's gonna go towards Arthur getting his end away. That's no. ridiculous. So you- you would- you would rather them not have the pleasure? of each other than just help them in. No, because they'd, they'd work out some way that they could do something for each other. I, I like to play the guitar, my fingers aren't long enough. I'd knocked it on the head. It's the same thing. If you can't do it, don't do it. So are you telling me, right, okay, um, if the, supposing there's a, li a little fellow who's got no arms, no legs, right? Right. L little Bob, okay, there he is. All right, Carl. Right. Um, he's got a friend, another little fella with no arms and no legs. All right, Carl. Right? They love each other. Two little, two little fellas. Little, two little dwarves with no arms and no legs, okay? Lovely little fellas. They get married, okay? Look, Carl, you can't, you can't put my, uh, my penis up my, um, my boyfriend's bottom, can you? No, you I go, can't, no. Why, why not? Why no, not? Do you need anything else doing? Uh, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, yeah. No, it's on. weird how you can manage everything else. Well, no. I'm no. here to help you, everything else seems to be sorted. Well, just in the chair. Why do you need help in this department? Well, because he's over there and I'm here and I'm just, if you just pop me in and just no, leave No, I'm not there. doing that, it's not good for you. You've lost your arms and legs, you'll be losing that soon if you carry on sticking it up there. <laughs> of course. Um, there are, of course, a number of, uh, extraordinary developments. Um, you may obviously be aware, Carl, that the first contraceptive diaphragms, centuries ago, were uh, citrus rinds. Half an orange rind, for instance, would be would be used. I mean, more selfish men turned them inside out. <laughs> I believe that's uh, also still being used in parts of Manchester. <laughs> Half a what? An orange. Just think of your head. And it worked? Well. We don't know, uh, at this juncture. I mean, maybe... I don't it works for contraception, because women went, Fuck off, what are you going to do with a fucking orange on your cock, or you don't think I'm... <laughs> but it could, it, I mean, again, it's that thing in it of, we look, we look at it now, and we laugh, but look, look at what's happening. 
people mm. now are always trying to get us to eat more fruit. <laughs> I don't know. Amazing. That's, that's a way of getting- I thought for a minute he was gonna say, okay, so they start with- then they went from the- the orange rind to say a coconut shell, yeah. that was too big, that didn't work. Yeah. Run! Here yeah. comes Coconut John! No, don't put half a pineapple on your cock, that's insane. Yeah, no. that's mental. And then somewhere down the line they finally got to contraception as we understand it. Is that- I thought that's where you're going, but no. no something no. about eating oranges is healthy no, for what, you. what I'm saying is, if you go into any well-known supermarket and you look at, say, some young kid who's had a kid, and you look at stuff in their shopping basket, yeah. they're not buying fruit. No. They're buying, you know, burgers and chips. Turkey Twizzlers, yeah, crisps. crisps and all that. Now, but they love having it away. <laughs> Get some fruit in. So they definitely have fruit in the house, which at the moment, a lot of kids don't have fruit in their house, that's why they're eating Turkey Twizzlers. But the mum loves having it away. So she would have loads of fruit in. So, so everyone's was, happy. If the she kids was are using an fruit. orange for contraception, she would she would also be giving the kids. Uh, well, you wouldn't waste so half it. the orange she'd give to the kids, and half the orange she'd well, stick uh, up her penny. Yeah, a treat for everyone. <laughs> have a bit of fruit, and you, she's got what she wants. Whereas at the moment, what happens? A burger's not coming in helpful for anyone. <laughs> if you want me tonight, pop a sesame seed bone on your cock. <laughs> Take out the fucking pickle. No one likes the fucking pickle up the fanny. <laughs> oh, 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 he's a bloody romantic. <laughs> oh, he, oh, he popped a, he popped a plum rose sausage at me fanny yesterday. He loves me. Uh, through the Middle Ages, particularly in Europe, we ended up going backwards, um, and it became, uh, you know, people sort of returned to superstition, started relying on that. You know, sanitation was poor. A lot of the amazing sanitation the Romans had built was left to ruin, and uh, we went backwards. And really, it wasn't until the Renaissance. That people like Leonardo da Vinci started to, uh, you know, draw uh, pictures of the anatomy and so on. Well, putting scientific um, evidence and experimentation behind the theories, as opposed to someone with a big cauldron saying, "If you bury a toad, your warts go away." Exactly. He looked into this and uh, and then thought, "Well, maybe they don't. Maybe it's a coincidence, you know." So uh, that's where our experimentation comes: empirical evidence, not just hope. Of course, you still couldn't uh, experiment or dissect humans because that was frowned upon. Uh, so often they would actually, they, the only people they were allowed to dissect and operate on were criminals. And at times, criminals would actually be uh, dissected or cut open whilst they were still alive as part of their punishment. Is that ever justifiable? Do you think, uh, Carl, that people sacrifice for medical advancements? They do it now, don't they? You hear about these people having, uh, you know, test done on them, you get paid 20 quid and they say, let's let's rub this cream on your head. Yeah. And you get your 20 quid and if, if your head goes funny, they say, well, you took the 20 quid, it's your own fault. Wasn't that a student that took, like, yeah, a few grand? Head, he what became happened? the living elephant man, didn't he? Oh, yeah. It was quite horrific, his head was in all kinds of weird Yeah, shapes. I mean, that's unfortunate for 20 quid. But mm. I'd say do it on the ill people, because they've got nothing to lose. Just test it, it's, you know, all this testing on animals and that. Well, don't test it on animals. If you've got an itch, the doctor can say, I've got this cream here, we haven't tested it, it might work, it might make it worse, give it a go. Right. Yeah, but the whole point is that if you do that, someone's head might blow up to the side yeah, of the Yeah, it elephant. might outweigh well, the ailment. That's, that's you... happened already. A fellow who had nothing wrong with him has now got a head of the elephant man for yeah. 20 quid. Yes, I know. Well, but... That isn't fair. No, I know. But you're saying, um, you're going for athlete's foot, rub this on your feet, Oh, your bollocks fell off. Never mind, it was a chance we had to take. I mean, that's a particularly sloppy bit of medical research, that one. <laughs> no, yeah. No, but say like my Aunt Inora, right? She's had everything wrong with her, right? She's had tablets that, that haven't been tested on anyone else. They test them on Nora. She's, and she's up for it. She's like, oh, I haven't had that. That's her little <laughs> tester. Yeah. She loves it. But she's, she's, she, she knows that that's the case. And she's happier to give something a go than not a go. I mean, it's ridiculous the amount of stuff. She rattles, she carries that many pills. <laughs> like a maraca. <laughs> you can hear her coming. But that's that's the way her life is now. She's just used to the fact that if it weren't for all these tablets, she'd be dead. Yeah, but, the, well, not necessarily, but the, but, but the pills, she doesn't take pills that have been untested. She's not taking experimental pills, I think pills, she's, Carl. she's, honestly, she's got so much, uh, Well, so again, you just, you just <clears throat> made that up then, you just assume that, that they haven't been tested on someone. Where'd they get them, where'd they get these pills from that haven't been tested? Well, it's, it, it's all very new. She's, she's on a lot of new medication. That can go either way. 
Could this be one of the reasons why she farted for 24 hours? It, it could have been one of the side effects. Five minutes. Oh, five minutes, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's what the, that's, you know, that's what my mum said. It's all a medication. Cause your body's in shock, isn't it? It's been, you know, given all these drugs that it's not used to. Luckily some of the pills weren't suppositories cause she'd have lost them. <laughs> in, the, in the, in the, in the great fart of 1989. <laughs> I've lost all my suppositories. <laughs> but you know, that's what you do, isn't it? If you're in pain. And, uh, I mean, like, I don't know if I told you, when I had kidney stones. I think you mentioned it. I was in agony. Yeah. And they said in the, I was in A&E, mm. lying on my back. Mm. And the woman at the A&E counter said to Suzanne, who's that over there? And she said, oh, he's with me. He's in agony. So they said, what's up with him? I said, oh, it's his kidney stones again. Because this is when I went back at the night. Mm. I, I was like, I couldn't care that people were staring at me. I, I was rolling about on the floor like a, a dying fly on my back. I just didn't care about what was going on around me. But I was told that because it's busy, that they might have to send someone out to shove like something up my ass that would get to the pain quicker. Well, what do you mean send them out? Well, they send, what, no, while no, you're no, lying no, on the no, floor no. in A&E, they're gonna no, send something so, yeah, What do you mean? Oh, you mean a, oh, you mean a, uh, uh, a pill? I thought you meant to get to your kidney quicker than up your nose. No, 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 a pill. They put it up there and, yeah. and apparently it'll kick in quicker. Yeah, yeah. The tablet works quicker. Yeah, up your ass and it does down your throat. Yeah, because it's you a have mucous it membrane and it's. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I was up for it. I just was like, whatever it takes. Now, saying uh, that to me now. But now, hold on, though. What if the doctor said, okay, um, I could give you this morphine. To take it. It will take a few minutes to kick in. Or I could rub some on my um uh, penis. Uh, I pop an orange on the end of my penis. I rub that in morphine and I pop that out of your uh, your, your rectum, Mister Pilkington. Are you in agony or not? Are you in agony? Okay, look, I'm just smearing- I'd, I'm, I'd, I'd say I'll get uh, a second opinion. Well, no, you haven't, you haven't got time. There it is. Do you want this up- do you want this up your ass? It's covered in morphine. He's, um, uh, in his private life, he's a- he's a- he's a promiscuous gay man, but in his- in his professional life, he is a doctor with, um, a morphine-smeared penis, and he's ready for action. So, if you're- are, are you, And he's he, willing to do that in the middle of A&E. Yeah. Well, so- He takes no pleasure from that. It's, it's just the only willing. way- to, so, are you in pain? Do you want this done or not? Yes or no? He comes out into any reception, his trousers around his ankles, he has an yeah. erect penis, he says, Carl, do you want me to stick this up your ass? And your answer is? Yes or no? I, 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 You're in terrible agony. He's wearing a condom. He smeared the condom in. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not unprotected, um, uh, uh, morphine, uh, uh, penile, um, surgery. Administration. <laughs> Administration. <laughs> and what, in and out, done? Just in and out, yeah, he just administered the, 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 your, your, your ass takes on the morphine from the doctor penis. <laughs> it's the only way, really. In uh, and out. Yeah, in and out. Up once, okay, and out. It'll definitely work. Uh, you, oh. you will. The pain will go away. No side It'll effects. It'll be pleasurable. No side effects. No side effects. No. I'd probably call Auntie Nora and ask if she's had it yet. <laughs>